So tell us, what is your name and where are you from? I'm Lizeth, and I'm from Arizona. What are you doing here? I'm an intern. <laughs> Amen. Internship program. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Good support. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your journey. So um, I grew up knowing the Lord in a Christian family, and I noticed that at an early age, I began to struggle with intrusive thoughts of self-harm and um, just depression. And instead of telling someone, I kind of just hid it away and I started meditating on those things. And it's funny because the word says meditate on the word day and night, but instead I would meditate um, on those things. And throughout the day, I would notice how it would begin to affect um, my day. And as time went on, those thoughts became actions, and I began to hurt myself in just different ways that I could think of. It was like this, this like oppression that I would feel that would come in an instant, and I would just feel overwhelmed. And it was like I had to act upon those thoughts. And um, after that, process of like two or three years. I was in high school and I had a, well, I was sexually abused by a guy in my school and I didn't know how to process it because all I felt was just shame and I just hated myself. I remember that I would look into the mirror and I would I would just cry and I would hate the way that I looked. And I would blame God for everything that he allowed to happen to me. And that created um, just a resentment in my heart towards him. But outwardly, I was fine. And I was coming to church and I was a pastor's kid. So everything was great. Um, but it really wasn't. And I was dying on the inside for someone to notice. And it didn't matter how many times I would walk in, nobody would. And as time went on, things got worse within and on the outside as well. I ended up having several suicide attempts and ended up in psych hospitals and, um, I wouldn't let go of that resentment to the Lord. And it was just one day where I was sitting in the back, and I remember we had a guest preacher, and I don't really recall what it was that she was talking about, but I remember that I just began to cry. And I made myself up, I made my way to the front of the altar, and I just kneeled down. She didn't pray for me. Nothing supernatural happened that I could see anyway. Um, I just remember that it was like I was being disarmed of every argument, of every false um, lie that I was believing about myself and about everything. And just his love began to just conquer me, um, and it was, it was awesome, but I got up, and it was as if nothing had happened, on the outside anyway, and I remember going home, wake up, waking up the next morning, and everything had changed in my life. My life was not the same. There was a peace and a joy that I cannot explain to this day with words, I just wanted to hug everyone and the sky was like so much bluer and everything was just, everything was gone that I struggled with and Jesus became real to me. So. Amen, amen. Let's take a moment just to praise God. Thank him for your freedom because I'm sure it's, it may not look exactly like this, but you have a moment of freedom that came to you too. And if you haven't had one, you're going to have one. Amen. So now tell us, you have actually a new desire of your heart. Can you tell us about a little bit about that? 
Yeah. Um, for a long time, I questioned in my heart the why. Why did I have to go through this? Why did you allow this to happen to me? But I now thank the Lord that every time that he gives me an opportunity to share what has happened to me, the why gets answered. If it means that someone can be encouraged, someone can know, wow, if he did it in her, he can do it in me too. Yeah. Amen, amen. So now tell us a little bit, you don't want this to just stay with you. Tell us a little bit about just your desire to share this and how you're going to do that and with who. Um, so back home, I the Lord is just bringing young people who are struggling with the same issues. And my desire is that the people around me would not go unnoticed. And I encourage those that are here today and watching on live stream to notice the people around you because everyone has something that they're dealing with. And we have the life of Jesus, the power and the love that, that disarms it and sets people free. And if you would just let yourself be used by him. We could impact the world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give a round of applause for Jesus. Thank you, Liza. So something that's so, her whole testimony is so power packed, but something that I want to point out to you, especially toward the end of that, you know, there's people in this life that will never find their freedom. They'll stay in their prison. And then there's another type of person that they'll get free from their prison, but they'll forget about who was in that prison with them. And then there's a third type of person, and this is who Jesus has called us to be. It's the type of person that gets free, remembers the people that were in that prison with them, and go back for them. We are called to be impactors of this world. We are called to be the kingdom carriers. And that looks like love. That looks like conquering love. Amen? So I just pray that over each and every one of you, that you will not just stay free, but you will go back and get other people free. In Jesus' name, amen.